0.16 BPAs if you want. Now, what's it doing? Well, what it's doing is it's clipping one of those phosphates off and making fructose 6-phosphate. And you say, well, how is that different from what it did in glycolysis? If you recall in glycolysis, the reaction required ATP, right? So what the cell is doing is it's avoiding resynthesizing ATP. In other words, it's using the energy of this molecule to drive the reaction. It says remaking ATP is too high of an energy barrier. I'm not going to do that, but if I just clip the phosphate off, I can make it very readily. And that's what it does. The product of that reaction is fructose 6-phosphate. And fructose 6-phosphate in the next reaction can readily be converted back into glucose 6-phosphate by reversing the reaction of glycolysis. And then we get to the hexokinase reaction. The hexokinase reaction is also bypassed for the same reason and by the same mechanism that the PFK reaction was bypassed. In this case, the cell uses an enzyme called glucose 6-phosphatase. You can call it G6PAs if you want to. Now, this enzyme is found only in the endoplasmic reticulum. Only found in the endoplasmic reticulum. So the very first enzyme of, glu of, of gluconeogenesis was found in the mitochondria. The very last enzyme was found only in the endoplasmic reticulum. All of the other enzymes are in the cytoplasm. Now, when we're done, the cell has glucose. Now, as I said, what happens with that is that the liver has these enzymes. The liver is the major organ in your body that regulates the concentration of glucose that your blood has. Okay? Glucose is a poison. Cells control how much glucose that they have at any given time, and your liver plays a very important role in that. If, liver, if blood glucose levels get too high, it will kill you. If it gets too low, you can't keep your brain alive, alert, awake. Okay, So that means then that the liver has to be able to sense how much glucose is in the bloodstream, make it if necessary, or absorb it if there's too much. Okay, So those two things that the liver has to do are very, very important in keeping our bodies um, in the proper range of glucose. Otherwise, we're in trouble. Okay, that, believe it or not, is gluconeogenesis. Any questions on that? Notice that this process is reversing everything of glycolysis, so it's going to require, in fact, we notice we're requiring ATP here, which is a reversal of the glycolysis process. In the glycolysis direction, we're making ATP. Here we're using ATP. And up here, we also use NADH. So to do, to make glucose is going to take a decent amount of triphosphates. It turns out there's six triphosphates that's needed for every glucose, starting with pyruvate. And there's two NADHs that are needed, starting, with every, starting, with, um, starting from pyruvate, to make glucose. So again, it's going to take more energy to make glucose than we get out of burning glucose. You say we're going to run out of glucose. Well, no, you're not. That's why you eat to make up that deficit. You eat to make up that deficit. Your body has to make and break down glucose. If all it did was make and break down glucose, you would eventually wither away to nothing because you would be losing glucose every time you went through that cycle. I mean, you'd be losing ATP every time you went through that cycle. You have to eat to make up that difference. Yes, Mitch? So why do we eat glucose, or I mean, why do we do this in the first place instead of just eating glucose? Why do we do this in the first place instead of eating glucose? Oh, it's, it's a very good question. So 
why bother to go through this process? All we have to do is eat glucose. The answer is we don't constantly eat glucose. And the needs of our body vary considerably. If we had an intravenous line going into our bloodstream that did that, we wouldn't need to, uh, to eat glucose. We wouldn't need to have this regulation. But we didn't evolve under those conditions. We evolved under conditions where we might have long periods of starvation. We might be spending a good deal of the day chasing some animal that we want to, to, to eat. And we have to have glucose for those conditions. And so our body has to be able to make it when we need it. Yes, ma'am. Yes. So if we want to make glucose from pyruvate, it takes six triphosphates, four ATPs, and two GTPs. It also takes two NADHs. Yes, that's fine. So if we want to make glucose starting with pyruvate, that's what we're doing at gluconeogenesis. If we want to make glucose starting with pyruvate, we need six triphosphates. That's four ATPs two GTPs plus two NADHs. From an energy perspective, GTP and ATP are equivalent. So if you want to think of that as six ATPs, that's perfectly fine. But the point is we need six triphosphates to get up there and do that. OK. Now, this lends itself to a song. And this is actually my favorite song of all the songs I've ever written. So I thought we would go through it. It's a little long. That'll give us a break as well. This is to the title of Supercalifragilisticexpialidocious. And you know this one. Okay, good, good. So please join me. When cells have lots of ATP and NADH2, they strive to store this energy as sugar. Yes, they do. Inside of mitochondria, they start with pyruvate, carboxylating it to make oxaloacetate. Oh, gluconeogenesis is so exhilarating. Memorizing it can really be exasperating. Liver cells require it, so there's no need for debating. Gluconeogenesis is so exhilarating. Glucose, glucose, come to be. Glucose, glucose, come to be. Oxaloacetate has got to turn to PEP, employing energy that comes from breaking GTP. From there it goes to make a couple phosphoglycerates, exploiting enolase and mutase catalytic traits. Oh, gluconeogenesis is liver specialty, producing sugar for the body most admirably. Six ATPs per glucose is the needed energy. Gluconeogenesis is liver specialty. Oh, glucose, glucose, joy to me. Glucose, glucose, joy to me. Converting phosphoglycerate to 1,3-BPG requires a phosphate that includes ATP energy. Reduction with electrons gives us all that NAD. And G3P's isomerize to make DHAP. Oh, gluconeogenesis is anabolic bliss. Reversing seven mechanisms of glycolysis. To do well on the final, students have to learn all this. Gluconeogenesis is anabolic bliss. Oh, glucose, glucose factory, glucose, glucose factory. The aldolase reaction puts together pieces so. A fructose molecule is made with two phosphates in tow. And one of these gets cleaved off by a fructose phosphatase. Unless F26BP's acting blocking pathway. Is <laughs> we'll talk about that in a bit. Oh, gluconeogenesis, a pathway to revere. It makes a ton of glucose when it kicks into high gear. The cell's a masterminding metabolic engineer. Gluconeogenesis, a pathway to revere. Oh, glucose, glucose, jubilee. Glucose, glucose, jubilee. From F6P to G6P, that is the final phase. The enzyme catalyzing it is an isomerase. Then G6P drops phosphate and a glucose it becomes inside the tiny endoplasmic reticulums. Oh, gluconeogenesis is not so very hard. I know that on the final we will not be caught off guard because our professor lets us use the filled out index card. Gluconeogenesis is not so very hard. There we go. OK. That is my favorite of all the songs I've ever written. I really I like, I like that one. So I wasn't fishing. I wasn't fishing for compliments. OK. Now, um, 
I referred to uh, F26BP in there, which I, I, I will uh, talk about in a second, but you've seen the overall pathway, and you've seen the different enzymes. So if you memorize gluconeogenesis, it's just the reversal of glycolysis for seven, different, seven reactions. You realize that three enzymes in glycolysis are replaced by four enzymes in gluconeogenesis. The first one had that two-step for one enzyme. Then PFK got replaced, and hexokinase got replaced. That's um, the differences between the two. Now, I want to say a word about regulation, because regulation here is uh, important when we're talking about gluconeogenesis. Why is regulation important? Well, it's important because we don't want to have glycolysis going on at the same time as gluconeogenesis is going on. The reason is glycolysis goes on, it gives us two pyruvates, it gives us two NADHs, and it gives us two ATPs. If I'm running, excuse me, gluconeogenesis at the same time, I'm going to take those two pyruvates, it's going to take six triphosphates, and it's going to take those two NADHs that's there to make one glucose. So I've just gone down and I go back up. The only difference is I've just lost four triphosphates. Produce two, use six. Okay. So if I have them both going out at the same time, I'm going to make what I describe as a futile cycle. And a futile cycle occurs when both catabolic and anabolic pathways are occurring at the same time, in the same place. Cells do not want to have that going on. Because all they will do is lose energy. Now, there are rare times where cells actually do have this going on. Anybody want to guess why they might want to have both of them going on at the same time? Uh, no. He said if they need an intermediate. Actually, no, that, that wouldn't be a case. With that? During division? No, not, not the case either. What's that? Not a balancing reaction, no. Eating while you're exercising? <laughs> no. They do it to make heat. Okay? So we have both these going on at the same time. Okay? We have reactions that are re the releasing heat. So you have cells in your body called brown fat. They're located near your spinal cord. And they go through a feudal cycles as a way of generating heat. And they generate heat to keep the spinal cord as warm as possible so that nerve, nerve signals can be transmitted at a reasonable rate. If you don't do that, nerve signals slow down. And if you're trying to get away from a grizzly bear out in the cold, that's not a very good career move. Okay? Babies have more brown fat than we do. And animals out in the wild oftentimes have more brown fat. But we have some. Yes? F-U-T-I-L-E. Futile. Yes. That's right. That's right. So it has to be it has to be involving the same molecules. Okay. And we'll see this over and over. Now, what I want to do is tell you some some simple mechanisms. We'll see one simple mechanism here that cells use to keep the two from happening at the same time. Okay. And we're going to keep this this part of it at least simple. This part is right here. Okay. Fructose 2,6-bisphosphate. Now, that looks like a molecule that we saw in glycolysis, which was fructose 1,6-bisphosphate, but it's clearly not the same thing. This is not produced by glycolysis. This is produced by enzymes that are trying to control glycolysis and gluconeogenesis. You'll see how in a second. So separate enzymes are making or breaking this guy down. This guy is something we refer to as a reciprocal regulator. A reciprocal regulator. Its name would suggest...